Shaker Heights, Ohio was named the number one city to live in all of Ohio by Niche.com for 2023. But there are a few reasons why people I know are moving out of this area. So we're gonna go over the pros and cons of living in Shaker Heights. And I'm, at the end of this video, I'm gonna drive you guys around some of these neighborhoods, show you some of the houses here and what you can get for your money in Shaker Heights. So let's go. So Shaker Heights has a pretty interesting history. It was incorporated in 1912 and was primarily developed by the Van Swearingen brothers who built Terminal Tower in downtown Cleveland, which was then the second largest building in the world. In the early 1900s, Cleveland, Ohio was the sixth largest city in the nation and it was kind of a hub for industry. So the Van Swearingen brothers built Shaker Heights as kind of this oasis away from the city for people to live. They put a lot of green space in here. There are a lot of schools. And of course we have downtown Shaker Square here. So Shaker Heights became this large residential neighborhood with easy access to downtown Cleveland because of the two public transit lines that the Van Swearingen brothers put in. As you can imagine with all the development going on in Cleveland, Ohio back then, Shaker Heights became one of the well wealthiest cities in the country. Now Shaker Heights is known for its really interesting, unique homes with a ton of character and one of the most diverse cities in Northeast Ohio. So before we go over the good things and bad things about living in Shaker Heights, I wanted to show you guys a couple of the kind of downtown walkable areas that people go and hang out in with the events. So we're over in Shaker Square right now, and this is just a large square with some shopping. They have the Atlas Cinema right behind me, Dave's Market. There are a couple restaurants over up on the corner. They have a lot of events here. They have a farmer's market every Saturday. And so this has become a really iconic, well-known part of Shaker Heights. So we're gonna head over to the other side of town now to the Van Aken district over on the west side, which is a little bit newer. It has a lot of shopping, restaurants, a lot of events over there as well. So Shaker Heights is only you know, four or five miles wide. There's only about 30,000 people here, so it's not a huge city. So we're over in the Van Aken district. It only took us about five minutes to get here from Shaker Square. So if you live over on the uh, eastern side of Shaker Heights, this is probably where you're gonna be going to hang out. You can see it's a little bit newer. They have shops, they have restaurants here. They have that green grassy area on the street. They shut down the street and they have a lot of events here in the summer. Uh, Market Hall over behind me has some cool shops and stuff in it. Um, but this is it. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys these couple areas before we talk about living in Shaker Heights. So let's go back to the studio and we'll go over the pros and cons. So let's talk about the good and the bad of living in Shaker Heights. Pro number one is the location. It's one of the biggest reasons people move to Shaker because we're only about 30 minutes southeast of downtown Cleveland. You have those two public transit lines, both of which meet in Shaker Square, which you saw, and you can go to downtown Cleveland from there. It's probably 15, 20 minutes, or so they say, online. Or you can connect to the red line that actually goes straight to the airport, which is really only about 30 minutes car drive from Shaker. You also have 271 access through Beechwood if you're going north or south. Within 20 to 30 minutes, you have parks, shopping, entertainment, Lake Erie, it's all right around there. We're also only 15 to 20 minutes to University Circle, which is kind of like a second downtown Cleveland. You have the art museums, natural history museum, botanical gardens, Cleveland Museum of Art, Cleveland Clinic main campus, which brings a ton of jobs to this area. They're very highly rated all over the world. Case Western Reserve University. So I have a couple professors that live in Shaker Heights because it's so convenient just driving 15, 20 minutes to work there. For shopping and restaurants, etc. in Shaker, you have the Van Aken district, which we just saw, and then Shaker Square, Shaker Town Center, which is what we passed on the way to Van Aken. And that's kind of on the south side of town. It has the library, the town hall. There's a Heinen's and some other shops there. So if you're on the south side, you'll probably be going to that Heinen's. Now, if you're on the northern side of Shaker, you'll probably be going to University Heights. They have a Whole Foods, a Heinen's up there. And then there's Legacy Village, which is kind of its own little shopping center in Lyndhurst. If you like parks and outdoors, Northeast Ohio in general has some really awesome places. But right in Shaker, you have the Shaker Lakes Park. There are two lakes there and a few trails in here. One lake has actually been drained for a couple years and it's kind of turning into a little swamp, which the residents of Shaker Heights are trying to resolve. The Shaker Heights Country Club is right over on the east side. So really it's a pretty convenient location for everything, arts, entertainment, parks, shopping. 
uh, especially if you work downtown Cleveland or at Case or the Cleveland Clinic main campus. So let's talk about pro number two. This is the second biggest reason people move to Shaker and that is the schools. Now as a realtor, you guys know I can't say whether a school is good or bad, but I can point you to several online sources like niche.com, which gives Shaker Heights overall academics of an A with most of their elementary schools getting an A or A minus, middle schools getting a B minus and high schools getting an A rating. US News puts the high school at number 72 in all of Ohio. And it's also worth mentioning that Shaker Heights has several private schools, which are ranked within the top 10 in Ohio, according to niche.com. Now, if you compare that to University Heights, just north of Shaker Heights, niche.com gives them an overall grade for the public schools of a C plus, and US News ranks the high school at number 244 in all of Ohio. So a lot of people will choose Shaker over University Heights just for the public school district. Moving on to pro number three, and this is why I love Shaker Heights, and that is the real estate here. If you're looking for like really cool character, unique styles, and that really cool historic looking properties, Shaker is definitely the place. When Shaker was founded, there was a strict architectural standards, and that's why a lot of these are like the French, English, colonial styles, lots of Tudor houses. But you can see how really unique and cool these houses are, and a lot of them are almost 100 years old or over 100 years old and still standing. They have the stonework, the hardwood trim, the slate roofs, and all of that gives these details a really cool historic feel. And I gotta tell you, some of these are some of my favorite houses to show in this area just because of how unique they are. Now it's definitely not like walking into a new construction neighborhood where every house is a standard plan, it looks similar, there's just a ton of character to them and that's what draws a lot of people to this area. But don't plan on finding a lot of new construction here because there really aren't too many houses built after the 50s and 60s. Another pro about homes in Shaker Heights is that they're comparatively very affordable. Now before you think you're getting an amazing deal, we have to talk about the cons of real estate here, so stick around for that. But the average price for a home in Shaker Heights in 2023 is about $300,000, and that buys a pretty decent house here. A couple more bonus pros are the cultural diversity, which is another reason Shaker Heights ranks as number one on niche.com. And I'd say that the east side of Cleveland is probably more well known for having those cultural aspects than the west side. So that's something I really enjoy about this side of Cleveland are the arts and culture. Now, before we get to the cons of Shaker Heights, I wanna mention crime, which is always a concern when moving to a new area. According to Neighborhood Scout, Shaker received a 38 out of 100 rating, which means they're safer than 38% of US neighborhoods. Crimegrade.com gives them a D plus rating, and for comparison, Cleveland Heights was given a D, and University Heights was an A minus. Neighborhood Scout does, however, say that per 1,000 residents, about 1.7 are victims of violent crime, and about 11 of property crime, which is well below the national average of four and 20. So enough great things about Shaker Heights. Let's move on to the cons of moving to this area, starting with the biggest reason people are leaving Shaker Heights. Remember how I said houses here are more affordable well, that's because taxes here kind of suck. In fact, property taxes in Shaker Heights are some of the highest in all of Ohio, and even in some areas of the country. In some areas, you can expect to pay almost 4% of your property value in taxes, which means that a $300,000 house could be like ten dollars to $12,000 a year in property taxes. For that reason, a few people I know won't even consider this area, and some people are moving out of this area, especially to places like Beechwood, which is almost half the property tax of Shaker Heights. Now, con number two, that is the roads, the transportation and traffic. And this isn't what you think. The traffic here is really not insanely bad, but people do park along the main roads like Van Aken. So you kind of have to watch out for them. And there really isn't a major freeway access that close. Like you have 271 way over on the east side, but it's not like Beechwood that has 271 half a mile away. Another thing about Shaker is that a lot of the east side of Cleveland are these kind of weird road layouts. It's kind of a grid, but then you have these streets that go in every which direction, and sometimes you'll have an intersection with six different roads on it, which is really confusing the first time you go through that. Van Aken and those neighborhoods run at like a 45 degree angle, so they're just kind of all over the place. So to actually get out of Shaker does take a lot more time depending on which neighborhood you're in. Also, another thing that drives me nuts, and this is just a personal pet peeve, are these bicyclists that ride right in the middle of the road here. And I'm sorry if you're an avid biker, but if at least could you please put on some like bright clothes or a flashy light, because it is almost impossible to see these bikers in dark clothes on a dark cloudy day under a tree lined street. You just have to watch out when you're driving in Shaker. 
Anyways, moving on, con number three, and that's again about real estate here. Yes, the houses have a ton of character, they're amazing, but they are very old. Some are over 100 years old, like I said, and sometimes they're well taken care of and sometimes they aren't. And so it's not like buying in a new construction neighborhood where everything's like done and nice and new. Now, because of that, the city has a point of sale system, which is great for maintaining houses. Uh, but when you go to sell, they'll come and inspect your house and they'll tag all these little things that you have to fix. And you have to have a contractor licensed with the city to do a lot of those. So if you're selling here, plan on having that point of sale list taken care of, unless you want to put all that on the buyer and then they'll end up paying for it. Now, another thing to note is that almost all of Cleveland has really old infrastructure, just the roads, the bridges, the sewers. It's kind of a joke that there's construction season here, uh, but especially in Shaker Heights, it's a good idea to have your sewer line scoped if you're buying a home here, because a lot of these are still that original clay tile, and that gets really expensive, and it's not something a lot of people think about when they're looking at a house. You don't go, oh, wow, this sewer line looks really great. You know, so it could get clogged, and that could be an eight to $10,000 bill just replacing your sewer line running from your house to the street. Now, con number four here is the weather. I have to mention this. If you guys live out of state, you got to know that the winters here can suck. The snow slows down traffic. It causes accidents. You have to clean your car and your driveway, but it's really the gray skies that can get to you after two to three months because Cleveland is ranked as one of the cloudiest cities in the country beyond Seattle and like Anchorage, Alaska or something like that. Shaker Heights still does fall within the snow belt. So you get a little bit more than say Akron or even like Twinsburg and Hudson. Now we do have four amazing seasons here, which for me is totally worth it. And there's really no natural disasters here either, like hurricanes, fires, floods, and even tornadoes. I don't think I've ever heard of a tornado in Shaker Heights. So you really have that. And the four seasons here are pretty incredible. So those are the biggest pros and cons of moving to Shaker Heights. I hope this was uh, really helpful for you guys. Shaker is a great city, but there are definitely things that you want to know before moving here. Maybe some of these are deal breaker, maybe they aren't. Now I want to show you guys around a few of these popular neighborhoods in Shaker Heights really quick so you have an idea of what you can get in different price ranges. Uh, but if you're thinking about buying or selling in Shaker Heights, I would love to help. I get calls from people like you all the time moving to this area. So give me a call, text, or email anytime. So let's go check out some of these houses. Okay, so we're going to start all the way over on the west side of Shaker and then we'll just work our way to the east. I would show you more drone footage, but honestly, Shaker Heights pretty much looks like this. These are just all residential neighborhoods with houses on like a quarter of an acre or less. If you're looking for anything on over an acre in Shaker, uh, it's probably going to be over a million dollars at least. Most of those are like two and a half million. So if you're looking for that privacy from your neighbors with a little bit of extra land, you're not going to find that in Shaker because almost all of these houses are a quarter of an acre or less. So Shaker Heights is basically divided into these nine different neighborhoods. We're going to start over in Ludlow and Moreland and Onway and then just work our way over to the east side. So Ludlow is a little bit smaller. I would say that Ludlow, Moreland, and Lamont down here are probably the most affordable houses in Shaker Heights. You can get something in one of these neighborhoods for $150,000 to $200,000 in Ludlow. And then Moreland has a little bit more affordable houses, one fifty dollars to two fifty. dollars The further you go to the east, they get a little bit more expensive, maybe two hundred, two fifty. dollars These are a little bit smaller. They're typically $1,500 to 2,000 square feet. A lot of these were built in the 20s or older. So if you're looking for something that's a little more move-in ready, you're probably going to be closer to that $200,000 price range. Right on the north side of Moreland, you do have that Heinen's Grocery Store Plaza there and the Shaker Public Library. So that's going to be the most convenient shopping area if you live over in one of those neighborhoods. And Onway is just above Moreland. Now this is where Shaker High School is. So this is a little bit more of an expensive neighborhood. The houses in here are about 2,500 to 3,000 square feet. These are again built in the 20s, but they range from about 350 to $450,000. And if you're looking for a house in Shaker, uh, you're probably gonna be looking in a lot of these different neighborhoods, unless you wanna be in one specifically, because the price ranges vary so much in all of these neighborhoods. This is kind of just a general, idea of what prices are in these neighborhoods. Moving on to Boulevard, this is to the north, and this is closest to University Circle, Case Western Reserve, Cleveland Clinic, so it may be a good option if you're working at one of those places. You have the Twin Lakes Park here. There's a large range of houses, probably the largest range in all of these neighborhoods. They go from about $300,000 up to over a million. Anything closer to the lake and the parks is typically more expensive, especially if you have a large lake or park view. 
On to the next neighborhood over to the west. This is Le Monde. The houses in here range from about 200,000. Le Monde and Mercer probably have the most houses that are built in the 40s, the 50s, and 60s. There aren't a lot of houses after that, and there really is no new construction in Shaker Heights. Uh, although there are some houses scattered through other neighborhoods that are 40s, 50s, and 60s, this just has the most of them in this neighborhood. Sussex is west of Le Mans, and these are a little bit higher. They're around the three hundred dollars to $350,000 range, uh, but there are some in there that are about two hundred dollars as well. Just above Sussex is the Fernway neighborhood, and these are probably two of the more popular neighborhoods in here. That's what I hear people frequently asking for when they're looking for houses in Shaker Heights, and that is because they're close to the Van Aken Market District. Some of these houses are within walking distance to Van Aken, and also in Fernway, you have the Fernway Elementary School, and houses in here range from three hundred dollars to $400,000. Typically, there are a lot that go for five hundred dollars typically four bedrooms, $2,000, $3,000 plus square feet, um, and especially in 2023 recently, there are quite a few houses that are selling for four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars in these in these neighborhoods. You also have the golf course and country club here in Fernway, and anything that's on the golf course is going to be a million plus. Now, right in the middle is the Malvern neighborhood, and this is also really close to the country club. And this has probably the highest concentration of million plus homes, up to three million dollars. There are some pretty incredible properties in there, larger private lots, one to one and a half acres. And then if you're looking in the five to $800,000 range, Mercer to the east of Malvern is where you'll find a lot of those. You have Thornton Park. Again, you're pretty close to the Van Aken District and also Fairmount Circle. Mercer also has a lot of houses that are built after 1950, so there are quite a few different styles in there. So that is Shaker Heights, the pros, the cons, and a very general overview of some of the real estate here. I know that was a lot, so thanks for sticking around. If this was helpful, subscribe to this channel. We're going to go into a little more detail with some of these neighborhoods in the future. And of course, if you're thinking about buying or selling in Northeast Ohio, I'd love to help you through that process. Give me a call, text, or email anytime. And thanks again for watching.